Hey everyone, Amy here. Today I'm going to give you a nuts and bolts overview of alternative text or alt text. For those of you new to the accessibility world, using alt text is one of the most basic and most helpful ways to improve accessibility of your digital images. So today I'm going to provide you with an introductory overview of what alt text is, why it's important, and how to add it to your photos, images, and other graphics. I'll also cover some basic tips and tools for writing good alt text. All right, let's dive in. What is alternative text? Alternative text is a description of a digital image written to the code behind an image or non-text item on a web page or document, and is read aloud to blind individuals using screen reader software to provide information on what the image is all about. This description is generally hidden from the view of sighted users. Here's an example of what a screen reader user might hear coming across an image in PowerPoint. Two items, A, digitally altered picture of a giant cat leaning on the building image. Alternative text is most commonly referred to by the shortened name, alt text, and you'll sometimes hear alt text referred to as alt tags. These are just different names for the same thing. So why is alt text important? Images are used on websites and documents to convey information in different capacities. Sometimes this is explicit information, like a map showing a business's locations, or a flowchart with specific steps in a process. Other times, the information portrayed by the image is more implicit. For example, a business may use a picture of people of varying backgrounds to represent its commitment to diversity. Regardless of whether the information is implicit or explicit, the image is providing some kind of meaning to a viewer. For folks who are blind or visually impaired, they will not be able to get information from those images by looking at them. They rely on alt text and a screen reader to provide them with the explicit or implicit understandings the images are meant to convey. More than 2 billion people around the world have a visual impairment. That's a lot of people. So it's important that we're making sure any images we're sharing online or in digital documents are accessible and meaningful to not only our sighted viewers, but all of them as well. How do you add alt text? The process for adding alt text varies according to what software or online platform you're using, but it's generally pretty simple. In most cases, you'll want to find a menu or settings for an image, and in there should be a space for entering alt text. I know that's pretty vague, but every tool does it a little differently. Microsoft Office products are likely some of the easiest. You should see an option for alt text if you right click on an image in any of the softwares. Social media platforms can be a bit more complicated as some of them are just starting to understand the need for alt text and other accessibility options. To help with this, I created guides for adding alt text on some popular softwares and platforms, including Word, PowerPoint, WordPress, Facebook, and Instagram. I'll link to those videos in the description below. Now that you know the what, why, and how, let's dig a little deeper into what constitutes good alt text. Someone once told me that alt text is one of the easiest things to understand and one of the hardest things to get right. And boy, is that the truth. Writing good alt text can often be quite a bit trickier than it first seems, and it requires a lot of practice to do really well. So let me share a few things to keep in mind that might help. First, focus on the meaning of the image rather than all the details. For example, in this image, you may initially be tempted to either oversimplify with something like a hotel lobby, or you may go in the opposite direction, describing every little detail. Neither one of these strategies is great. Stop and go back to the intent of the image. If this image is posted on the hotel's website as a way to entice potential visitors, perhaps the alt text might read, an open and airy lobby with multiple seating options, or a four-story lobby with a variety of couches and tables. There's no one right or wrong answer here, but again, focus on what the image is trying to convey. My next tip is to keep your alt text short and to the point. I recommend following the Twitter rule of 140 characters or less whenever possible, though this isn't a hard rule. Unless an image is complex, typically readers will spend just a couple seconds at most with an image, and we want the same to be true for folks accessing the image via screen reader. Anything longer is usually unnecessarily detailed or starts to distract from the meaning of the image. Which brings me to my last tip. Images that are complex or require a more detailed look will typically also need a text equivalent. If you have images like graphs, flowcharts, or complex diagrams you need to describe, it's going to be tough to do so in 140 characters or less. Instead, best practice says you'll provide a text equivalent, usually in the body of your document or website. The text equivalent should provide a more detailed summary of the information being conveyed by the image. 
When images are really complex, text equivalents are beneficial to everyone, not just folks using screen readers. For example, this flowchart on the pet adoption process was created in Word, and like all smart art in Word, shows up as an image to a screen reader. There are multiple steps detailed in the flowchart, and it's going to be too lengthy to try and include these in the alt text. Instead, add the flowchart steps using sequential text just after the flowchart image. You'll still want to add alt text, letting folks know what the image is all about. Flowchart for pet adoption process, full text outline included after image, or something like that. In the case of a graph, you may also want to include a separate data table from which the specific numbers or data can be read by the screen reader in addition to the alt text and a text description. As I mentioned, writing good alt text can be tough, but there are a couple resources I found that are really helpful in walking you through the process. I'll link to both of these websites in the video description below. First, Penn State University's accessibility website on images and alt text is fabulous, particularly the section on complex images. They break down into basic and easy to understand terms, how to write good alt text, and how to approach trickier images or situations. If you get stuck writing alt text, I recommend heading to their site and poking around to see if you can find some support there. The other resource I find really helpful, especially when you're first learning alt text, is the Poet Training Tool. This website has a lot of great tips and examples of how to write alt text or image description, as they call them, and give you practice with identifying the best option for alt text for various images. One of the features I like best is their practice tool, where you can upload your own image, pick what type of image it is, and the tool provides tips and recommendations for how to write alt text for that type of image. The tool isn't savvy enough to give you feedback on your alt text, but practicing and having the tips to guide can be really helpful. All right, that wraps up Alt Text 101. What questions do you still have? Let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. And don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date with our latest videos.